What is going on everybody? Again, my name is Lucas. Welcome to the Centralian Exotics YouTube channel. It has been a very long time since I have made a video. Might as well just kind of jump in from scratch, discuss some of the new projects that I have going on here, and uh, let's just hang out and have a little tour around uh, my reptile room. And I will show you guys everything that we have uh, going on at this time. Hopefully along the way we can highlight some amazing animals, maybe some that we haven't talked about in the past. Uh, so let's do it. First things first, this is not a reptile, but this is Juni. Juni is a husky that I am fostering uh, for a local sled dog rescue. So she is uh, spending the holidays here with me and my other husky, and uh, that's a lot of work, uh, but a lot of fun also. Uh, okay, now reptiles. Project, I'm not sure if I've talked much about it on the channel. Um, I am working with a pair of captive born and bred Wamina uh, type scrub pythons. So Wamina scrubbies are a little bit different than some of the other uh, scrub pythons. I definitely am not an expert when it comes to that group. I'm not even gonna try. But what I do know about the Wamina type is that they have a pink tongue, uh, which is a little bit different than a lot of the other uh, amethystine pythons. And in addition to that, they tend to be a little bit smaller if you don't overfeed them. Um, so my pair uh, was produced by Nick Mutton. Um, he has produced the species three years in a row now from his wild-caught uh, founder parents. And so I'm really excited uh, to have these guys. My female Wilmina scrub is in this enclosure at the moment, and she is going to be spending pretty much all of her time up in that sky hide. You can see her peeking right now. There she is. Incredible animals. And they're great if you are okay with working uh, with a little bit of attitude and long teeth. Over here on this side of the world, uh, we have my female diamond python. I call this diamond python Nora. She is a beautiful 2020 uh, female diamond girl. And one of the things that I'm really enjoying with keeping uh, this diamond python is I went ahead and tried to do a little something different with the enclosure. Um, a lot of people that keep diamond pythons uh, discuss them doing pretty well in a standard mesh top glass aquarium, you know, a little bit of old school keeping, if you will. Um, this is a species from the very, very southern regions of Australia. And of course, in the southern hemisphere, uh, the more southern regions are going to be the more uh, extreme in terms of temperature. This is a cold adapted carpet python. Um, and so as such, many people that work with these animals have noticed that they are especially uh, susceptible to basking under a bulb. Um, so rather than doing some belly heat or, um, you know, a radiant heat panel or something like that. I'm maintaining this diamond python under a mercury vapor uh, spot bulb. So a very nice, warm, concentrated hot spot uh, that she can bask under, um, as well as a, a T5 UVB light. She certainly plants herself under this light to get nice and warm and then relocates herself uh, outside of that hot zone. Now, as you can see, this enclosure is live planted. We've got some pothos, live grass. I don't know the name of that plant, but I like it. Um, and so I actually did this enclosure um, pretty recently. I used uh, the expanding spray foam, uh, carved that up, coated the spray foam with zoopoxy, and pressed uh, soil into the zoopoxy before it dried. Um, is it super, super good and professional? No. But I think it looks pretty good overall. I am happy with it. And diamond pythons are just incredible. I'm so excited to end up getting more in the future. And this is a project that I'm really, really excited to pursue. And up here in this enclosure, of course, we have pickles. That is my male Kimberly Rock monitor. He is awesome. He's gotten so big. Such a beautiful lizard. And he's doing great. He is uh, usually pretty chill. Boop. T5 
here is my female rough scale python. Uh, I call her Sabine. And she's putting on size really well. Um, if you've been a follower of this channel, you probably remember when she arrived as a little baby noodle. Um, we're getting there. I think she might be ready uh, to try and breed in the next couple of years. Rough scale python, Morelia carinata, one of the coolest snakes uh, available to us in the hobby. Um, these guys are just absolutely a joy to keep. Uh, more closely related to a green tree python than a carpet python, um, but they are really just something different. Certainly something to check out if you're into uh, semi-arboreal snakes and you want something a little different. And here is my female inland carpet python. Inland carpet python, Morelia spilota metcalfi. This is my female that I call Dua Lipa. She has put on size and she is doing absolutely incredible. She is just one of the most beautiful inland carpet pythons that I have ever seen. I feel so lucky to have her. Um, I mean, just look at the color that she's developed with some size. Of course, when she arrived as a little tiny baby noodle, she didn't have any of that color. She was mostly just a black and gray, bland looking baby carpet python, but you never know uh, what is gonna happen when they undergo that ontogenic color change and take on their adult coloration. Of course, inland carpet pythons, like everybody has said, it's true. They do have a blue hint to their uh, base color. It's really hard to capture on video camera or any camera for that matter, but it is evident when you see them in person. They are just an unbelievable species of uh, carpet python. In addition to my obsession with the pythons of Australia, I'm also a big fan of a lot of larger colubrid species. This, of course, uh, being one of those. This is an eastern indigo snake, Drymarkon uh, cooperi. This is my male. Uh, I call him Muldoon. And he was produced by John Michaels of Black Pearl Reptile here in California. Now, this, of course, is an incredibly gorgeous species the largest native serpent to the North American continent. These guys patrol the Southeast. They use gopher tortoise burrows as uh, some of their primary retreat sites. And they uh, are known for eating um, Eastern diamondback rattlesnakes and pretty much anything in the region that will fit. Um, so these guys are ophiophages. They do eat other snakes, and that includes uh, some of those most venomous uh, pit vipers down in the southeast. Now, the eastern indigo snake is an endangered species, as most of you probably are aware. Um, you do need paperwork to transport them across state lines, and some states will not let you keep them uh, in any case. But luckily here in California, we do have John Michaels of Black Pearl and a lot of other great keepers that are producing these things, and they are just so incredibly fun to keep. Totally unlike anything uh, that I work with in the Python family, but really, really fun, really beautiful. Um, they're very visually oriented and they have a killer food response. Now these guys, I feed more often, smaller meals more often. So maybe uh, every four or five days, I'm giving my indigos some small meals and boy, do they like to eat. And this is my female Eastern Indigo. One thing that's really cool is that her and the male are uh, genetically uh, unrelated, so they will make a wonderful pairing down the road uh, to try and produce some nice, uh, genetically healthy Eastern Indigo babies. Black-headed pythons, you know that I love my black-headed pythons. This is one of my females uh, from Jason Hood. This is a Swiss line black headed python produced by Jason. And she is doing phenomenal. She's gotten to a great size and she is absolutely gorgeous. I love this female and I can't wait to try and breed her the season after this one. She is living it up down there in her five by two by two at the moment. And speaking of black-headed pythons, I've discussed in previous videos that I was trying to breed my pair of Western black-headed pythons. 
Uh, this, of course, is Bailey, my female uh, 2017 Western. She is absolutely gorgeous, unreal pattern. I love this snake. Um, she is chilling in this six by two by two, uh, manufactured and delivered by my friends at GX3 Reptiles, Grant and Riley. So I kind of dropped the ball in terms of making videos and keeping y'all updated on this, but I was able to produce two uh, baby Western black-headed pythons last year from Bailey and my male. Um, I did get seven eggs, five crashed and burned, two survived. Let's take a look at the very first Western blackheads and the first blackheads at all that I produced here at my place. This is one of the babies that I was so lucky to produce. Now I called her Moon because she has this really unique patterning where um, it's almost like a black stripe down her back, but it's broken up by all these cool little squigglies. And some of these squigglies kind of reminded me of crescent moons, uh, like that one there. So definitely, definitely so excited to produce blackheads. Uh, so excited to have something wacky like this pop out. They're typically not always that black. I mean, you saw mom earlier, the classic uh, banding going on. So definitely this baby has a little bit of a different look going on. She's not going anywhere. There is Moon. She is, of course, eating very well on her own at this point. Um, you know, baby blackheads is quite a struggle to get them feeding when they're young. This is absolutely my favorite animal that I have produced to date, and I'm so excited to race her up and watch her grow. And so here is Moon's sister. This is the other black-headed python that I was able to produce last season. Uh, haven't named this one uh, because she is not bound to stay here. Um, as you can see, she's also just absolutely stunning. More of a classic pattern, a lot more like mom with the nice clean uh, banding. The reason that she is not staying is because I'm going to be uh, swapping babies with Dr. Justin Julander, who also produced Western Blackheads last year. And so we're gonna trade females and diversify our uh, bloodline a little bit. And the father of those two baby Western Blackheads is actually old Greg. He's in right now with my other Western Blackheaded Python female that I call Tracy. Um, I am pairing them up this year. And of course, Tracy is the female Blackhead that I got from uh, Derek Roddy. There she is, there he is. And they have definitely been locking up uh, and I hope to get a clutch from them this year. Blackhead love, blackhead love. And if you didn't know, old Greg is actually 21 years old and he sired the clutch last year at 20 years of age. So that's pretty dang cool. Love to see old snakes getting it done. And rounding out the blackhead conversation, of course we have Demi. When I acquired her in 2019 as a fresh little baby noodle, uh, this is the first black-headed python that I raised from a baby. So Demi is more of what you would expect to see from an Eastern variety or Northern Territory uh, black-headed python. More color, a little bit more doled out on the bands. Um, but I really like this look too. I think that these kind of orangey, rusty, olivey tones are really quite beautiful. And if you look at iNaturalist of pictures of blackheads in the wild, there's a ton that look pretty much just like this. So fingers crossed that that works out and we get eggs from this beautiful girl. And one of my newer projects that I'm just so absolutely excited about that I don't think I've talked about yet here on the YouTube is my Queensland water pythons, Liasis fuscus. So the water pythons are an incredible species of snake. They exist in Northern Australia and in New Guinea as well. However, the pair that I'm working with is from the Queensland locality of Liasis fuscus. Just look at that beautiful orange belly. That rainbow iridescence is just nuts in the sun. And these guys are really, really fun. 
Um, they are a super cool species of snake. This is my female, uh, produced by Nick Mutton. And then I have a male from William Philippec that is also the Queensland variety. So really excited to raise those up and have a pair of beautiful Queensland water pythons. And of course I have my beautiful Morelia breadlie. This is one of my big hypo het stripe moms, uh, Adele. Now she had a clutch of babies for me this last season and I do still have some available. She has produced two years in a row for me and she will be getting this upcoming year off. So if you are interested in some hypo het stripe uh, hypo stripe babies, uh, let me know. We do still have some available from beautiful Adele. I've been breeding isopods from the Cubaris genus. Uh, so that's kind of weird, kind of different. Not really sure how that happened, but I got a ton of papayas. They're popping off. Look at all those papaya isopods. Uh, so pretty fun. I've got a few enclosures that are semi quote bioactive, whatever that means. And so I go ahead and stock uh, papaya isopods for myself. And they're really easy and fun to have around. So I guess I do bugs. What do you know? And false water cobras are doing well. This is my male falsy. Uh, he is in shed at the moment. We'll leave him alone but love my false water cobras. And here is my female falsie, uh, produced by Crawdaddy himself, Dr. Zach Loafman, and she's doing great too. Absolutely beautiful. Falsies are so fun. Here's something a little funny, a little different, very off-brand for me. This is my gargoyle gecko. Uh, I call him, ah! We call him Burp, and Burp likes to jump. Burp is an agent of chaos, but Burp is really, really pretty. I love the new Caledonian geckos. This is the only one that I have at the moment, but he's so cool. Baby like Chipotle garter snakes. Let's see if we can get one out. And there's one of the gorgeous baby Lake Chapala garter snakes that was born here in August. I absolutely did not uh, anticipate breeding this species. I thought my adults were way too small and too young, but uh, what do you know? I was eating my oatmeal and she pooped out nine babies and I'll take it. Um, they're doing absolutely great. Absolutely gorgeous, uh, and I love this species of garter snake. They grow to be even larger than the California giant garter snake. So these are one of the larger garter snakes in the world uh, at adult sizes. This baby is putting on size incredibly fast. I think he or she is going to be a monster. And here is the enclosure where I keep my adult pair of the beautiful Lake Chapala garter snakes. And this is a super, super aquatic species of garter snake. So they pretty much need their water changed every day. Uh, they spend a ton of time swimming, but they are just absolutely gorgeous. Check out her colors in the sunshine. They are just absolutely stunning. Beautiful, beautiful animals. And here's another one of those custom jobs that I did in terms of the enclosure with spray foam and zoopoxy. And of course that there is a neonate green tree python. Uh, this is a red bioc baby, um, really, really beautiful. I am super excited to have green trees again. I used to have a female Aru. I sold that female to a friend. Uh, so now back in the green tree game, uh, this again, a beautiful red, Biak. Baby Aki monitors. These guys are pretty fresh, born in November. Uh, this one is obviously uh, shedding its skin. Uh, these guys are eating great. So if you're looking for some gorgeous red Akis, these are available. Uh, get in contact with me for baby Akis. And one of the other new projects that has definitely not been discussed on this channel yet is my pair of olive pythons. Uh, she had a nice big meal yesterday, so I don't want to bug her too much. But this is Cleo the female olive python, super, super fun. And they're gonna be pretty dang big. So that'll be interesting. Uh, but they are 2022 babies, nice and feisty. And she means business. Ah! 
Here's Lewis, the male olive python. Again, of course, produced by Owen McIntyre. Uh, they are super, super, super awesome snakes. Super fun, and he also just ate, so we will let him be. This is Pete Davidson, a male inland carpet python from the Schofield line, uh, produced by Nick Mutton, uh, raising him up to eventually be a uh, breeder to Dua Lipa. And you guys all know how much I love a nice orange Woma python. Well, look at the color on her. So excited uh, for her to probably try and go uh, a year from this one. She probably could go this year, but I don't feel any need to push it because this right here is my beautiful female that I call Tangy. Now she's pretty doled out right now. Uh, I think she's going into her pre-lay shed. She is absolutely gravid. She is full of about nine or 10 eggs from what I can feel from palpating her. And so I'm so excited. Uh, hopefully she lays a nice healthy clutch. Those babies are gonna be so pretty because that right there is dad. Can you believe that parent? When I post about him on Instagram, I just call him the pretty one. He is the sire uh, to the clutch if that gravid female Tangi uh, lays nice fertile eggs. So I think there might be some really insane Woma pythons in that clutch if everything goes well. There are a few other Woma pythons that I'm pairing up this year and hoping to get clutches from as well, including this really beautiful light pastel colored girl. She has been locking up with her male a ton, so fingers crossed there. And hoping to get eggs from this really nice yellow female as well. So we're hopefully gearing up for a big year when it comes to Aspidites here, uh, fingers crossed. All right, everybody, thank you so much for watching the video and joining me today. There is definitely more stuff going on here than what I showed you, but this is gonna be long enough. So let's save some stuff for another day. Uh, let me know what you think in the comments, like the video if you liked it, subscribe to the channel if you wanna see more, and I will see you all in the next one.